Good morning, Tom and Tom here, cool young timer cars. So, there are a bunch of car reviews on YouTube, so why do I do it? Well, I just like outstanding cars, especially young timers, the ones from the 90s and early 2000s. And I adore BMWs. Hence, today I'm going to introduce you to one BMW model. It will be a BMW 8 series. But no, not the one that you thought of. It will be the legendary E31. This car was driven by Robert De Niro in two of his movies, The Heat and The Score. Apparently, the guy feels something for this model, wouldn't you? So, I will show you in and out, point out some fancy options this car has, and uh, introduce some facts. Starting with the first. This car was introduced in 1989 at Frankfurt Motor Show in Germany. And it was the first ever BMW fully designed on a computer. The cost of the development of this model was a staggering 1 billion USD. And now if, if you think about this amount of money and the grill that small, huh? Now conceptually, this model follows the legendary E9 and to some extent the first 6 series. And why I've mentioned E9, just look how cool it looks with both windows down. There is no B-pillar, just like in the mentioned E9. Second, and the most outstanding attribute of this car is, of course, pop-up headlights. Now, this element was extremely popular back then. Uh, Ferrari Testarossa had it, Lotus Esprit had it, uh, Honda NSX. Actually, once even I had a car with the pop-up headlights. It was a Mazda 323F pop-up headlight car for poor people. By the way, there was one more BMW with pop-up headlights. It was called M1. Haven't heard of such? Well, not a surprise. They've built only short of 400 street legal, plus around 50 racing versions. And that car is extremely expensive nowadays. Uh, asking prices around 500, 700 thousand euros. How do you guys think you would blink the high beam? Will the lights pop up and do so? Well, no. Look, here, in the lower part, there are dedicated high beam lights in this car. And of course, when you need to use the high beam constantly, for example, at night, so imagine I'm driving, you have proper high beams in the pop-ups. One more interesting thing. Fog lights are also there. Now, the car became more sporty with an introduction of so-called M-trim. The front bumper was more slick and sporty. Then there were different mirrors. I'm afraid in this car they are standard. And at the back, there was a specific so-called pseudo-diffuser at the lower part here. Now, this specific car is also equipped with uh, M parallel wheels. And the interesting point here is that front to back they have different width. Let's pop up the hood, shall we? The interesting moment here to do that, you need to press those two small tongues inside, and only then you are able to open it. And this specific model is equipped with. Uh, V8, 4 liter V8. There were also different versions of the engines, and uh, I will get back to it a bit later on. Let us also look into the trunk. First of all, look at the size of it. It's a huge trunk, a true Gran Turismo. Let's have a look here on the left, and let's have a look here on the right. Exactly. There are two batteries, and this setup was used in many other BMWs of that era due to the level of electronics they had. They are connected in parallel and work as one single battery. By the way, two batteries are also good for weight distribution. Older cars have a tendency to drain the battery, so to avoid that, you would need to disconnect the negative cables, of course. In this specific car, so-called current breaker is uh, installed. You just roll it out, and that's it. There is no current. 
This car is also equipped with original BMW CD changer. It's capable of shuffling up to six compact discs. The music flows, everything functions. How cool is that? Before moving on to the interior part, let me introduce you to Tom, the other me. He lives in my garage, he likes statistics, and he will introduce you the quantities and uh, some other numbers of E31. Hello guys! Thank you for visiting me in my garage. Sometimes I feel quite lonely here, you know? By the way, I'm Tom, the original me, and the other guy, I think he was lying, okay? But we'll get back to him later on. So, today I will present you some stats. Don't be afraid that there are too many digits. I'll try to go one by one. Okay, so there were mainly two versions of E31, V12 and V8. The most popular was, of course, 850. Uh, it, around 70% of all the cars made was in this version. Then there was a specific version CSI, quite power, powerful one. Uh, it was made in small uh, quantities, and uh, it was even called almost M8. And why almost M8? Because on the technical papers it was written M8, and the uh, chassis number was also WBS. And uh, this WBS is on all BMW M series cars. But it was not M8, and we will get back to it a bit later in the video. I will explain it. Then 840, and the interesting version, which was not a version, but like a, a, a separate trim, let's say, or a market version. It was called Japan Individual. Uh, only 299 was made, and the interesting point here, the car was sold exclusively in Japan, but it was EU spec. It means that the steering wheel was on the right side of the car, on the left, LHD. The car had a different trim, and basically interior trim was the, the one that was unique to this model. Anyway, all in all, according to E31, registry. Nowadays there are around 42% of 8 series E31 survived. Now guys let's have a look at some more peculiar stuff. There were more versions of E31 but they were never sold. 830, 3 liter more economical uh, engine and more economical version. 18 pieces were produced, but 17 of them are destroyed or dismantled. One of these prototypes is still uh, available to have a look at it. It's in the BMW Museum in Munich. There was uh, one Cabrio. It's also in the BMW Museum. Also was never produced. And there was uh, a real M8 with 6 liter V12. BMW acknowledged its existence, existence of this uh, prototype, only in 2010. Imagine that. They, all the time they were saying that there were no M8, it was only 850 CSI, the car that we, uh, the model that we had a look at it before. And the interesting stuff about this model, the engine, this engine, served as a basis of the legendary McLaren F1 engine. Now here, do you know uh, what do we have here? Recognize this brand? Alpina B12. Only 154 were, were, were produced and uh, they are not in the list or in the, in the numbers of BMW because this is a totally different producer different motor, different suspension, different interior, exterior trim, and so on. Overall, uh, what we can say about Alpina, the cars were exceptional, exclusive, and of course expensive. So, let's stop here and let's get back to the other me. How was it? I hope you guys survived Tom's digital lesson. Let's get inside. Okay, first of all, look at the size of this door so massive and then the most outstanding feature of the interior is of course this cockpit it's 
properly futuristic. Also think about it, it was made 30 years ago. The dashboard is also different to usual BMWs of that era. Look how speedometer is laid over RPM meter. Another interesting feature would be the seat belt. It's installed in the seat itself, you see? Now let's look at the passenger side. An airbag is here, although previously in some older models there was a glove box inside. And the original glove box is here. By the way, what do you think these rings are for? What is that? No idea? And how about now? By the way, this water is awesome. And here, this is something that every car owner should treasure. It's a Bible. Inside you will find maintenance history, user manual, invoices and so on. A treasure! Now, remember the CD changer from the trunk? This car apparently has another cool feature. A vintage MC cassette player. Wow! Let's take a closer look at the center console. Now this car is equipped with automatic gearbox and here you can see how advanced it was already 30 years ago. It has sports mode for more aggressive acceleration and also this snowflake means that you will be able to use this mode on a slippery road, for example on snow. Here, a small container for smokers. I, I don't smoke. Thank you very much. Now let's take a look at the back seats. These are not that ridiculous as in Porsche 911, so you can feel yourself quite comfortable here if you are up to 175 or so. As you might see, I'm a bit taller than 175, so it's a bit tricky for me to fit in. Yet I feel quite comfortable. Here at the back, we have the first aid kit. Here it is, box. And here, on the rear side, you will find a ski bag. There is one cool feature here at the back, is when you transform this backrest to a comfortable luggage space. And your backpack feels very cozy here. Okay guys, let's switch back to the other Tom again. He will explain you how much money would you need to have in order to buy yourself an 8 series 30 years ago and how much does it cost now? Me again, Tom, the only me. Let's check the prices of E31, shall we? So, 850 when it was launched was the most expensive BMW of all. It was even more expensive than the BMW 7 series limousine. The price was 135,000 German marks which, according to inflation and calculation nowadays, would be around 115,000 euros. Not bad, huh? So how much is the 8 Series worth now? I've put some prices here, the lowest to the, to the biggest, and of course I based these prices uh, on two most popular websites in Europe. It would be Mobile.de or Autoscout24. In total, on offer, currently, there are around 120 pieces of 850, only around 10 CSIs, which is, of course, obvious, having in mind how uh, little they produced. Then around 30 840s, and I've encountered only two Alpinas B12, with a staggering price of, one was priced at 100k, another at, at 120. By the way, when you it was even more expensive than the BMW, of course. Exclusivity and you need to pay for that. By the way, the price of new 8 Series, the G15 that was launched in 2018, is around 65, 70,000 euros. So, you can compare it. Except for the Europe, uh, there are a couple of more regions where E31 is a popular car. Of course, it will be United States, Japan, uh, Arabian Peninsula, Russia, Caucasus region. Oh no, God!
No, God, please, no, no, no! What was that? <sighs> anyway, so uh, there will be around 200 pieces only worldwide of E31 available. Uh, a little scarce, don't you think? And related to that, what I think is that it's a good time for you to buy yourself an BMW 8 Series. It's a proper classic car, and you can buy it as a daily drive, you can buy it as an investment, or you can buy it as your dream come true car. This guy again. I hope you didn't get bored and learned something new today. So, that's about it. I hope you like the car, I hope you like the video, and see you next time. I will introduce you another BMW, a Ferrari, and then something more, more interesting. So, be cool, subscribe, and stay safe.